So start to feel more rather than less. Again, as you quiet down, so like I, I, right now I'm leaning on my forearms, but however you want to ground yourself, right? <clears throat> Just keep letting in. Again, slightly more attention to the exhalation without necessarily trying to change it. Soften like the right now I'm making sure I hold a lot of tension in my jaw. So, but when I combine relaxing my jaw with like the skin on my forehead, something else happens, right? So, and keep your lips together and teeth slightly apart. So something's opening. As you're quieting. Like a form of nourishment. And then start to sit up straight and tall, start to feel, start to start more activation. Make sure you're equal on your sitting bones. If that means lifting up and setting yourself back down more equal that. <clears throat> right but now after you've kind of gotten quieter now you're trying to add and feel the the boundary created by your body and then re-soften the organs of perception but now you have slight sense of activation working to be congruent with the quiet and your inhalation and exhalation bridges the gap between the quiet and the activation. Close your eyes from top to bottom if you have it. Let go of your day and prepare your mind to do yoga. Good, and then release so you kind of let go of the structure for a second and then reactivate take your sternum up towards your chin your chin down over your sternum right so now you've reposed by releasing and then re-engaging things begin again Raise your head up with closed eyes. Open your eyes. Um, I was listening to you guys talk about the leaves and about how, you know, the, how the drought might be affecting it. And one of the things that I've um, noticed is it seems to me that like you've got some leaves that are turning faster, some leaves that are turning slower, you know, so you've got the whole continuum of like, the way time usually plays out on the on the leaves, right? So like right next, so I mean, and where I am, you got rusty colors, and then some of the bright colors, and then there's still some green. So it's like you got a wider range of time happening on the trees, right? Where they're reacting to things, and and I remember there's a line that I think is really important. I remember I think it's from the person that started Waldorf schools, the 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 philosopher whose philosophy it's on um 
is that you have to have, in order for the life to thrive, you have to have organisms moving at different speeds. Which you don't really think about that, but like if everything moves super fast, there wouldn't be able to be a food chain, you know, like, like literally life requires a diversity of speed, right? But the same thing happens in yoga poses, right? That you need to move certain parts of your body faster. Other parts of your body need to hold back. You have to slow things down to feel more, even while you're moving. Like even in, in a pose like that, you've got different. So sit up straight and tall. And so, you know, does everything have to be moving at the same speed? No, the lift in the chest and the extension down to the sitting bones and feet may not be happening at the same speed, right? But they have to, you have to allow, and your mind is gonna make you focus one place more than the other or of the couple of places that it can be aware of, except your mind has to be in a yoga pose, has to be patient enough to hear more of the body, not just what it's activating to do. Right. So in a way, the emptiness or the relief or the quiet in a yoga pose travels slower than your actions. Right. It actually you have to pick up. That's why so many people aren't good at calming themselves down. They don't know how to be at different speeds within their own experience because the quiet and the relief there is actually happening at a constant presence, which is either you think of that as really fast or really slow. I think about it as really slow, right? So just take a couple of breaths. Like, so I'm always wanting to activate that part of me or know that it's here whenever I can. And it almost always means having to slow down, right? Like almost always internally slow down. So again, you're just feeling again. So one of the things that I've been teaching for a while is being able to notice and sense different sensations within experience that you normally wouldn't identify. So put your hands on your, on your legs or on a table, right? So I wanna be more overt about the sensation of grounding, right? So you start to feel it. And, and why is it that all of a sudden when you really tune into it, you can feel that, hey, it feels good to feel my feet on the floor and my hands on the table or my hands on my legs. Like it actually feels good. So there are certain sensations that the brain usually doesn't let go through the mind because the mind's going too fast, right? So you're just taking, you're just taking this sensation and going, hmm, and letting it inform you. So like right now, because my hands are on the table, I'm feel, I wanna feel my equal on my sitting bones. Right, especially if you've gone through a period where you haven't been sleeping very well, grounding is a really important sensation. Right, that actually people, you know, it's amazing to go and teach people in healthcare. They they've totally forgotten what it is to ground while they're working. They're so busy. The other thing that I was I was mentoring a couple of people last week that are working in COVID wings, right? They're and 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 they're managing and they are so freaking exhausted, like. I can't tell you like what I heard this last this last week and how the how they're crashing the healthcare workers. It's like insane, right? And and we should all be carrying healthcare workers with us now in a big way, right? Because they're we're asking them to do something for 20 months now, watching the culture not pay attention to what's happening enough to change their behavior, right? <clears throat> They need grounding and lift your chest and just start to feel. So you're trying to land into your experience, but then also trying to activate. So one of the things I've spent a lot of time doing is trying to um, differentiate different levels of grounding, different ways that it feels, right? Good, and then release. <clears throat> so <clears throat> one of the things that's very grounding is is to be able to feel where one of the end points of your body is. So whether, if you can, right, I'd love you to pick up your leg and, and be able to touch your feet, touch your whatever without strain, or the, wherever the end of your body is, right? So, so if that means that you want to, if you can just grab your, your calf, okay, grab your calf. If you can't, 
but whatever it is, and if you, you know, like touch the end point, right? For me, it's gonna be my feet. And I wanna like take a part of your body. So whether whatever you can touch, I want you to kind of rub that spot. So on one level, you're bringing and try to squeeze it a little bit. So if it's your forearm, say you're just using your forearm, right? Or you can't, you can't grab your forearm and you're having to push it against your leg. I want you to feel the sensation that comes from the skin. Right? So if you're grabbing your foot, I want you to squeeze your foot. And, or if you're grabbing your forearm, grab your forearm. If you just can touch your forearm, touch your forearm. Right? But I want you to listen to as you squeeze with consciousness and gently squeeze that area. So I'm just trying to activate sensation at an end point on my body by creating a tactile sensation, right? I mean, that sounds complicated. It's like, just touch and feel what happens. And then if you squeeze a little bit, feel what happens again. So I'm just working on my feet, like I'm just squeezing them and letting the relief of whatever part of your body that you're bringing relief to, let that be part of your grounding sensation. Right, so I'm gonna like move my ankle around and <clears throat> do some things. Even if you're just crossing your legs and letting them touch by crossing. Right? So I'm just gonna like move my ankle around. I'm just trying to create sensation that, that, is, that is happening to this part of my body as opposed to my body trying to activate it. So it's just a different level of sensation, right? Where it's receiving more. Right, so I'm just like getting the blood flow to go to a part of my body, right? Because that changes what the brain picks up, right? And then if you can, put your fingers between your toes. <clears throat> Otherwise, just keep touching whatever part, end point of your body you are. And so what we're trying to get is this quieter sensation. <clears throat> and feeling that starts to happen when you more overtly enter your body through sensation, right? <clears throat> instead of like trying to press or instead of action, you're trying to feel connection just by sensation, especially on the skin, right? So then I'm just gonna rub my foot a little bit. It's like I'm, whatever, it could be any part of my body, right? I'm trying to activate awareness <clears throat> tactile. So this, I started to do stuff like this when, like, when I was sitting in a traditional yoga class and they were doing standing poses, for example, and I and they're going through kind of fast, and I knew that the standing poses were helping them feel their legs and the strength in their legs. I couldn't do the standing poses, so I would start to actually rub on my skin, trying to create the awareness and the presence that they were getting from the yoga pose, right? And so here I am, just trying to create sensation right, on, on my body, on, <clears throat> at the farthest point away from my brain, right? This is the longest travel that sensation comes to my brain, is my feet or down lower. So I'm actually trying to hear both ends from here to here, right? <clears throat> and then I'm gonna switch. And this way, you wouldn't have to do it. You know, you, you could do it and rub your foot on the floor. You could rub your calf, right? doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing. That's why I'm trying to explain what I'm trying to achieve, not just how I'm doing it. And I'm wanting to get, especially when you've had a busy time or whatever, I, it's totally natural to lose connection with your base. It happens all the time, especially when you're stressed out. So again, I'm just trying to make connection to my legs, through my skin, maybe squeezing a little bit, right? But I'm just trying to say, hey, I want this part of my body more with me. And you're almost never gonna go wrong if you bring your legs and your feet with you more, right? Stress makes the energy pile up in our heads, right? And that's not, so this is like a strategy of grounding. So remember, I'm not feeling this tactilely. 
right? The way you, most of you are, right? Like I'm not feeling the exact touch, but when I've done this, I'm gonna shake hands with my, with my feet here. And I put my fingers between my toes and move my toes around a little bit, move my ankle around, create sensation by receiving in a certain part of my body, right? And then I'm gonna set my feet back down and see if I notice any difference. Can I pick up any sense of relief? Can I feel the imprint of my touch on whatever part of my body you're touching? Can I just like let it in? So this awareness that comes more through the skin and receiving, and I wanna see if I can pick up a sense of lightness from having like woke up my feet. And now I want you to count and then lift your chest and, and become congruent with whatever sensation you gained, right? Because the sensation didn't end when you stopped touching. It actually stayed just not as present, right? It's in your mental memory. You can kind of still feel your skin where it was touched. Again, here's a sensation that moves at a slower speed, right? Now I want you to contrast that with pressing awareness down through your heels. Or if like you, you, if you wanna feel it even more directly, um, for somebody that can't move your heels directly, push it on your own knees or touch the end point of your limb, right? But I want you to get, as you press, feeling what it felt like to feel your skin, press down through your heels and really try to ground the bone, like so your the heel has got more of a bony energy than the ball of the foot, okay? And that's used a lot in yoga poses, okay? So I want you to really press down through your heels and it's somewhat similar if you press in against your own knees. But I want you to get what it is not to receive as much through skin, so I don't want you rubbing your skin. I want you actually pushing in one direction so like you, could even, you could even push down on your, on your knee down to the floor and then rise back up. But I want you to think of, feel it and notice it as how it, it's, there's of course I, can, I can't feel it, but the touch on my knees right now, but I'm looking for a different quality of sensation and then press down through your heels. So I'm gonna lean down again and press through my feet and ground my feet and notice and contrast that with what it was when you tried to activate your skin and then back up again. <clears throat> and then, you know, just to remind yourself, there's this type of sensation, touch yourself on each arm, for example, or on each leg, right? And then press, right? <clears throat> and put a different kind of sensation in your mind-body relationship. Now, Bikas Engar, the last time he was in the United States said, you Westerners need to do more more yoga from your bones, not just your skin, not, not, not just your muscles, pardon me, right? And so I'm just trying to show you a contrast and then go back to like just touching your legs again. The difference between when you ground through a bone and when you just receive through the skin, right? And then press down again and, and lift your chest. Now the lightness that came from the tactile touch is also part of your base. It's really strange. So as I'm pushing down through my, onto my foot pedals with my, with my arms, I'm trying to remember and feel the sensation of what it is just to rub my feet. And I wanna breathe into both. I'm asking you to differentiate between sensations. Right? And now balance your head over your neck, sit up straight and tall, press back on your own knees and start to recognize when you balance your head over your neck, you are more in a position to feel what's coming through the skin. And then you ground back through your knees and you're combining different levels of sensation, right? And you breathe into that. This type of dual type of awareness, at least dual, is in every yoga pose. Your brain gets better and better at differentiating different sensations, right? And then release, <clears throat> bring your hands into prayer. 
So there's an easy, obvious contrast between if I push hard and, and notice a lot of times we tell you to activate the moral vert is to push more by the heel of your hands at first and make it more physical, right? I can push hard together, right? And then release. I'm mostly just pushing in this direction, right? <clears throat> and then release. And I'm going to do it again. Now I'm going to make this connection, feel it without having to make it too loud, connect it, and then I'm broadening across my palms. So now I'm using the force and the grounding that was analogous to pressing through your heel on the heel of your hand. But now I'm trying to be aware enough to spread the, the skin between in the center of my palms and trying to feel both levels of sensation and ground them through my sitting bones and balance my head over my neck and breathe. Good, and then release. <clears throat> <clears throat> so then <clears throat> I want you to take both arms wide. So now how are you gonna get to your fingertips? So like, yeah, if you can't take both arms up, just on the one side that doesn't go up, feel the outer tip of your shoulders. Being able to contrast between where the end points or tips of your body are. So feel your fingertips and the top of your head, right? Try to like, you, you now feel the underside of your arms. So you're gonna tendency to hold up your arm from the top of your shoulder. I'm saying don't. Good, and then take your arms down. <laughs> so the grounding sensation is slightly different than the efforting sensation. So I had you hold your arms up for a while, right? To try to get you to feel fatigue, take your arms wide again. <clears throat> but so, and then just like let your arms hang out there like, like a scarecrow, right? <clears throat> now I want you to activate. Extend through your fingertips, work the underside of your arms, move the shoulder blades back towards the spine, extend out beyond your fingertips. Now I can tell you my head is out of whack. I'm getting fatigue in one side of my neck, right? So I can tell you I'm not opening all the way. Good, and then release. So these are part of the things that you're exploring in terms of different sensations, like where the fatigue starts to come. For me, it was right there, right? Because I wasn't doing it as well as I could. So I'm gonna take my arms wide again. So now feel the freedom of going beyond your fingertips, down to your feet, through the top of your head, get it more expansive. And now ground through your sitting bones, ground through your heels, bring the muscle back towards the bone on the upper arms of your arms wide, add the sensation of grounding and expand into the whole room. Good, and then release. Bring your hands down to your thighs, press it on your knees. Here comes the grounding sensation and the rise. So as I push back on my own knees and I naturally lift my chest. So I got this grounding. I wanna lift my chest and now I want the center emptiness of my chest to also expand. So I'm, and I'm gonna breathe into that. So I've got this grounding energy and an expansive energy. So remember, your breath introduces movement, right? And it touches the quiet part. Good, and then release. And then similar to the sensation of grabbing your foot at the end point of your body, I want you to lift up again. And again, try to get that sense of light in the base of your spine. Right, so we're doing that through traction and through space, right? So like, I'm just feeling that. <clears throat> feeling the bottoms of my feet, feeling the tops of my head, hitting down through my sitting bones, <clears throat> rising up. And now broadening and extending out my shoulders. So I'm adding the, most of the directions this way. Now I'm trying to add this way and breathe into that. So I'm doing this and this, vertical and horizontal. 
When the brain is asked to do that, <clears throat> sensation deepens and grounding increases. And you're going to see a lot of poses and then release. A lot of poses are going to ask you to move in opposite directions all the time, vertical and horizontal, right? <clears throat> so now take your arms wide again, right? So as you try to like broaden from the center of your chest, that's already a grounding point out through your wrist. Now hit through your sitting mode. So, and stretch out to the top of your head. So your arms are this way, but the activation has happened this way. And hopefully as you do that, you get more connected to your arms. And as you hit down through your sitting bones, notice that bringing the upper arm muscles towards the bone, towards the bone actually expands your awareness, right? So you've got this grounding sensation happening through effort as you hit down through your sitting bones and up to the top of your head, and then from the center of your chest out through your arms. Good, and then release. Introduce grounding again. So that was effort for me. So I'm actually pushing on my knees again. Now I'm gonna change the direction of that and lean forward. Again, you know that one of the places I repeatedly go to is helping you make space in your low back, right? So you're leaning forward and lifting your chest and really focusing on now think about what the instructions are doing. Right now. Having you lift your chest, right? Vertical, hitting down through your sitting bones, that's still vertical. But now I'm gonna ask you to broaden across your sacrum, broaden across your collarbones. As you broaden, don't move, don't lose the lengthening. I'm nodding my head like the lengthening energy, I'm trying to point to it. There's this energy, and then there's the, the horizontal extension across my very low back across the my collarbones. And I wanna take it a couple of breaths into the simultaneous vertical and horizontal extension and breathe, right? <clears throat> and then arms wide again. So from this position, feel your side waist and feel your sitting bones. Take your arms up. So this is really hard for me, I'm off balance, right? So this isn't a great pose, for me, right? And then I'm going back. And then I'm gonna take my arms down and just go up with one arm. And now as your left arm's up, press through your right sitting bone and right heel. Get that grounded energy from the bones. Breathe and then down. And then again, I'm gonna go one arm. I'm gonna take my right arm up, left arm, left hip sitting bone down, left heel down trying to create the conditions of balance so I can really work. Because if you're working into when you're off balance, your muscles are gonna get, are gonna get taken advantage of. Good, and then release. <clears throat> and then again, <clears throat> take your feet wide. All right, so now we're just opening up. <clears throat> so just by having, for me, having this open, it's a change of sensation. Right, but then I'm going to want to ground, and I'm going to want to ground it a little bit. I'm going to push my arms into each leg. Hopefully, you can tell which which groin is tighter. Right, right off the bat, and you notice input right away. Right, and so I'm following the sensation of being more open <clears throat> with the sensation of hitting down through my sitting bones and lifting up. So I'm going vertical into a horizontal expansion and breathing. So this is gonna be a lot of what standing poses are, is your, your limbs in different positions, <clears throat> being more aware of your spine. Good, and then release. Bring your <clears throat> legs back together. Push in on your knees. Lift your chest, if you've got it easy and accessible, come forward again on putting your hands on the table or onto your, onto your thighs. So you're, what we're doing now is just letting, making the spine continually learn how to not only extend this way, but expand horizontally, right? Because the spine feeds both energies, right? It actually feeds both the, the horizontal expansion and the vertical expansion. Take a couple of breaths. 
Good, and then <clears throat> come back up again. Take your legs away. <clears throat> So now, like we've done a few times before, but no. Now, can you remember? I'm going to take a set of time here and try to remember what it feels like to feel my skin, right? So I'm, I'm rubbing on my knees and find where your feet are. And however you're rubbing on your legs, connect it to the feeling in your feet. Now, some of you are going to be luckier than I am. My feet are not very grounded on the floor. So I have to sit there and think about how to feel more balanced and grounded in a place I don't have sensation, right? So now I've got this open feeling, right? Now take your arms wide. So I have, this is a balancing pose for me, right? So probably less so for most of you. So I'm trying to feel, and as soon as I start to, I don't want you to lose your feet in your sitting bones. So come on back. Remember, there's different layers. Most of you can feel. So one of the disadvantages that more, quote, able-bodied people have is right away their mind gets caught up into the muscular part rather than the grounded part. Grounding doesn't really come from muscular action. Bracing does, which is different. Bracing is a form of grounding, but it's not the nourishing one, right? And then I'm gonna go back, trying to feel connected to my, my legs and my feet. I'm gonna to try to go down to my sitting bones, up to the top of my head, out through the arms, back towards the midline, down through the sitting bones, out from the inner groin to the inner knee, and down to the feet. Then I wanna feel the whole room. Good, and then release and come down. So <clears throat> bring your legs back. <clears throat> So just to become aware, your brain to pick up gravity shifts, come forward. Remember, I think gravity shifts are really important, right? <clears throat> and that's, and then back over your chair. So that's one of the things when you sit in a chair <clears throat> that you don't have a lot of is the variety and then forward again, is the variety that's created by gravity shifts, right? <clears throat> again, Maybe why smoking is being, is sitting is being called the new smoking. It actually doesn't have enough diversity in it. So you start taking more weight into your low back, right? So you're just trying to get this, right? And of course, I'm gonna to wanna to go off to the side because again, the gravity shifts of standing poses go in all directions, right? So you're going back and forth, right? but trying to feel not just the effort, right? But the change when you're going and then sit up straight and tall again, right? And feel, right? That, that one of, you're trying to like live into more gravity shifts, right? And let that enhance your awareness, not just increase your struggle, right? Because gravity for some of us is like, it's the, just take your legs wide again. Gravity for some of us, like falling is like the big, the big no-no, right? So it's like gravity shifts have to be realized as really important too. So now you're gonna lean over towards the left, right? <clears throat> and now you've got, as I'm grounded here and hitting down, can I open here, right? So I'm introducing the more bone-like grounding sensation. And I'm extending back through the opposite leg. And now if I want to create more grounding for that movement back through the opposite groin, I can touch my knee, but don't let touching your knee stop you from extending on the inside from the inner groin to the inner knee, right? So then go back without it, right? So you can feel where your knee is or needing to be pressing gravity down this way, extending out this way, and now make sure your heel's connected to the floor and ground there mm -hmm. and breathe. So you're just introducing diversity into your spine and then come on up to center. 
And right away, define center at a deeper level than I'm used to. I touch my knees right away. You know, for me, I just need to like get that relief part of the grounding. Right? Because we're working that energy now. And then going the other way. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to make sure that as I feel the gravity shift this way, that I'm trying to open and extend this way. To do that well, hit down through your sitting bones and lift up this way. Now, each side of your sacrum, the, the left side of your sacrum, point to your left knee. The right side of your sacrum points to the right knee, right? As you're lengthening here, as you're opening your chest, there is no place of your spine that's not working now, both in a straight line and horizontally, in a vertical line and horizontally. And you're breathing into that. So you're introducing fullness and emptiness into a sensation in your body. Good, and then release. Bring your legs back together. <clears throat> so this idea that your breath introduces a, sens a mini sensation of fullness and emptiness, right, is a really important function of your breath. So just take a big breath. That's all I mean by fullness, right? Exhale your breath. Emptiness and fullness at the same time is something that your breath delivers to your brain, right? That, that contrast, and that contrast is crucial for sensation. So, so go back to just touching lightly on, on your knees, just the skin part or rub it on a place, right? So being able to really appreciate and, and feel the change in sensation that's more tactile. I've got to feel not just, I got to feel the emptiness more. Now push it on your knees. That's the grounding of the bones. That makes me feel more in charge, right? I feel like I'm, I'm feeling it better. I don't have to doubt myself as much and then back, release and back to the subtle. Now I've got my hands between each knees and I want you to extend, broaden across your sacrum and extend out through each knee while hitting the sitting bones down and lifting your chest. And then you're gonna just take that same energy, lean slightly over and take this arm up. So now you got something moving in the opposite direction of gravity. I don't want you to lean a long way for it. I just want you to feel. Now keep each sitting bone. Their weight's gonna be more on your right sitting bone than your left. Right, so, but there is, there's a way to equalize. Good, and then release. Be again in the center. Again, notice how often I'm going back to grounding, right? And then back the other way with a little bit of, the, with this core channel, not leaning over too far and introducing too much gravity, but getting the expansion. So now bring the shoulder blade in as you lengthen the arm. And as you do that, and go beyond your fingertips, it's an invitation to hit through your sitting bones more and through the top of your head more. So standing poses are gonna constantly utilize the subtle body. Good, and then release. <clears throat> I'm gonna ground my knees again so I know where home is. Take a breath, introduce movement, emptiness and fullness into the experience. And then take the legs wide again. And now I'm taking a couple breaths, I'm pushing my groin apart, noticing which groin is tighter, all those things, right? All of that. Finding my sitting bones, lifting my chest, broadening between my shoulders, shoulder blades. And then I'm gonna come over and lean over to the right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go a little farther, but I'm gonna be very aware of this back leg. Right, because I don't want to lose grounding when I'm efforting. Right, I want to be able to be both. And the grounding energy is constantly there if you can access it and it moves at a slower speed. Now take your arm up and now I lost the overt sensation of grounding, but my brain has to like pick it up again. Wait, there it is, because my mind, my brain gets it. My mind, my brain can still feel the imprint of my hand. Right, my mind doesn't pay attention to it. And then over, 
Okay, so now I'm following more. So now the back sitting bone, the left sitting bone, the left knee, become even more important, connected to the foot. Go beyond your upper arm fingertips, down through the inner groin of the left knee, down to the floor. Now introduce emptiness and fullness at the same time by watching your breath. And then start to use the inhalation to expand and the exhalation to go deeper into the pose. Notice that you can utilize the emptiness and fullness. Good, and then come on back to center. For me, I needed a couple of recovery breaths. So now I'm gonna lean over this way, farther than normal, and trying to stay, although the grounded down energy, right? I'm trying to open with that, from that, and then take the arm up. I notice I right away exhale, then ground it through my sitting bones and my feet, and then take my arm over, right? And now I'm still trying to extend through the right inner groin to right knee on the foot. I'm lengthening and lifting my chest. I'm going in a different direction. I've got different gravity tensions, right? And I'm trying to then introduce the expansion and fullness of my inhalation and the length that's possible on my exhalation. And I'm using my breath to improve, improve the actions of my posture. Good, and then release. <clears throat> Bring your legs together. <clears throat> Get positioned on your sitting bones equally. Press on your knees, lift your chest. Take your arms wide. Hopefully you can feel where your legs are more now. So you can hit down through your seat, sitting bones and your feet as you hold your arms up. So now I don't know about you, but I can tell I'm doing this better than when we did it, than I did it 10 minutes ago. Like I can feel the more wholeness of me. Good, and then release. So here's the grounding again in the midline. So this comes back to your radar, right? Open your legs wide again. So now you don't, obviously you're not in line this way, but you don't lose it. And then take my arms wide and get way bigger. So there's a still this, but now there's also that and the wide, the wide arms are like connect your wrist to your knees or your wrist to your ankles, your elbows to your knees. Breathe. Good, and then come on back again. <clears throat> Lengthen your back. So hopefully you've kind of, your body's naturally at this point, as soon as you lean forward, you take a breath, right? You use the fullness coming. And then with the emptiness, exhale, broaden across your collarbones, across your sacrum and hit down through your sitting bones. So you're using the fullness of the inhalation, using the contrast to the emptiness of the exhalation and using it to move your muscles, to feel strength and stability. Good, and then <clears throat> release. Take your left arm up, go to the outside of your leg, take the other hand behind you. So now, what, how do I keep the quiet with me as I'm overtly trying to twist? So one of, the, one of the things we naturally teach beginners, right, is to inhale and rise up. In other words, follow the expansion and the movement to expansion of inhalation. Exhale, ground, and revolve. 
And then you repeat the process. You fill the vessel, create the opportunity for the twist. Inhale and then exhale and revolve. And now lift under the collarbones, feel the tips of the shoulders, feel where your sitting bones are, where your feet are on the floor. And find a place where you can stay active, but not strain. And breathe. Take three inhales, three exhales. Fill the vessel. And then empty it. Good. And then back to center. So this is what's really interesting to me. It's like when I inhale and fill the vessel, I'm not able to control the expansion just happens, right? Through my whole being. When I exhale and can use the exhalation to help guide the movement and the action, then I feel paradoxically like there's more of me doing the pose. But remember, exhalation connects to the parasympathetic nervous system the calming part of the nervous system. So you're learning to effort in the calming part of your breath, all right? So now sit up straight and tall. Take your right arm outside your left leg and take the other hand behind you or whatever, wherever the place is. And so now I'm trying to, again, come back to the midline, back to a sense of grounding but I want expansion too. So I'm already opening the center of my chest, right? I'm trying to get that open. I'm gonna inhale and fill up and then exhale and revolve. Effort on the emptying and then inhale. That's just happening to you. Exhale and let your action go with the exhalation, the space, the emptiness. Good, and then come on back to center. Be in the center. So what's hard about, and then come forward on the table, what's hard about being this aware of stuff or on your, on your thighs is that everything becomes so mental. So we're gonna do a whole series of things like kind of in rapid fire, kind of go through some of the things we did today right? And make it into a sequence. So you're not thinking so much, right? Which my instructions make you think, right? Good. And that's what we're going to come back to it. <clears throat> Get ready to run through like a whole series of things that we worked on today. All right. First, find where gravity is forward and back. Like, you know that you're going to shift. So this energy is going to come into your poses, right? And then inhale and take your arms wide. Get down through the sitting bones. Stretch out to the top of your head. Expand beyond the fingertips. Use the underside of your arms. Mm -hmm. Now take a breath. Harder for me to inhale here, but I'm going to let it go out to my fingertips. Exhale, I'm going to lengthen. So horizontal and vertical are actually at the center of my being right now. Good. And then come on back to center. And then take the legs wide. Mm -hmm. And then again, take your arms wide. So now my base has been sacrificed a little bit, but I can compensate for remembering what it is to feel grounded by hitting down through my sitting bones, opening the center of my chest out through each wrist, extending out to the top of my head. Good. And then release, bring your legs back together. Ground back on your knees, find the midline, find the lift, right? but then broaden across your collarbones. Mm -hmm. Then you can take a gravity shift and you're gonna get open here. Then you can go back to the middle, go the other way, get open here. And then back again, get open here, right? And then after that opening, take your arms wide. Mm -hmm. And then back down, take your left arm up. Exhale it back down, your right arm up. Exhale, back down, come forward, broaden across your sacrum, press down through your feet, especially your heels. Good, and then come on back to center. Take your legs wide again. Lean over farther to the 
right? Open up to the left. Get this really open, congruent with the strength down on your legs. Good time to feel emptiness and fullness, and then back to the center, and then go the other way. Again, trying to get this expansion, feeling the vessel, and then emptying it into action farther into the pose. Good, and then release. <clears throat> Take your legs together. Again, get on your knees, find that sensation that goes through the bones, lift the chest, but now feel the top of the head, the outer tips of the shoulders. Remember where your skin is, feel your skin, and then take your legs wide again. Take your arms wide, lengthen your spine vertically to fill the vessel horizontally. Out through each knee, out, out through the knee, out through each elbow and wrist. Good. And then drop and come over to the right. <clears throat> Take your arm up. Touch the room way back here. Keep that connection. Turn your arm over your head. Open. Don't forget the arm when it was out horizontally. Be open, right? Mm -hmm. Good. And then release. See, if I had a table over here, I could have really got the full expansion. It's okay that I don't, but I just, I think of it when I'm doing it. And then go the other way. Stay connected and open. Take the arm up. <clears throat> get bigger in the room. Touch the four compasses of your room. Like get in your whole room. And then take the arm over and ground it. And then feel the inhalation. Fill the vessel. And then extend on the exhalation. Back and forth. Using that breath, that emptiness and fullness at the same time. Good, and then come on back to center. <clears throat> First side again, <clears throat> this idea of fullness, the hands now following the expansion. Exhale <clears throat> into a straighter line, <clears throat> but you're still trying to extend out through your back leg and your back foot as you're lengthening this arm. Feel the fullness of your inhalation from rib cage Connect to the bottoms of your feet. Exhale, keep lengthening, feel fullness and focus at the same time. Good, and then come on back to center. Go the other way. Straight out, feel the fullness in the room. Feel the effort when you have less space. Good, and then come on back to center. <clears throat> feel the center. Bring your legs back together. ground. Left hand outside the right leg, gentle. Twisting your low back. Not so much the upper back. Good, and then come on back to center. And on the other side. Twisting your low back. Not your upper body as much. Good, and then come on back to center. Feel each foot, where each knee is, each sitting bone, each side of the breastbone, each side of your head. Come forward. Feel that grounding sensation. The more you can feel grounded in Shavasana, the more nourishing you can get, more nourishment. And then back. And then open just a little bit, because even though the grounding energy seems quieter, more like moon stuff. There's also an opening in Shavasana. So then come back to the midline. Practice symmetry for a second, where each heel is, where each knee is, each sitting bone, each breastbone, each side of the head, where the top of the head is. Whatever adjustment your body wants to make, given the perception of symmetry, make it. Learn to move from the impression of symmetry. Good, and then Shavasana. So set up in however you're gonna set up.
before I overtly go to the Shavasana, I have to kind of let it transition. Let the effort I've just been through go. Then I'm going to start to enter that receiving state. So, so I just close my eyes. I'm just going to let my chair hold me up. And surrender part of my control, much of my control. That's why the mind struggles in this place sometimes. The thing is, we all crave not having to be in charge. Let it in. You are a part of something that's way bigger. Lips together, teeth slightly apart, relax the temples, the jaw, the inside of your mouth. Feel your breath, don't change it, thank your body. Thank you again. Start to bring yourself back, slightly deeper inhalation, slightly longer exhalation. When you're ready, open your eyes slowly. And then close them if it was a surprise. And then open them again. <clears throat> so I ponder um, often why we're not able to keep our relief or the restorative part or where we receive why human being has a hard time not keeping that with us as we live our lives, right? And and um, and it, it makes me, you know, Patanjali from the other just thinks that's because our minds are too agitated, which is probably correct, I don't know. But what's so important about, one of the things that helped me is to recognize that the receiving part of me is, so when I say it moves slower, it moves so slow it doesn't change. It's always there, regardless of the drama. So it's not about creating um, relief or not being stressed, a sense of calm. It's actually about configuring in a way where you can sense what's already happening. Right, and that's part of the, and what asana does is make the efforting distract you and until you can figure out where the nourishment is. 
right? Where the unchanging part is, right? And then you're introducing movement to get both. All right, <clears throat> have a good week. Keep on keeping on.